so certainly, certainly nothing fancy. Um, we had a, a group of really brilliant minds, so hopefully, hopefully we came up with something great here. But we only had 45 minutes to do it, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. <clears throat> um, we did try, though, to to create a list or some thoughts or ideas that aren't already in the last 20 years of reports on this particular topic. <clears throat> and and to your question about wh whether people were just talking about what's near and dear to their heart, I actually think this group majority were kind of here to discuss about the bigger picture. And, and, and I think that worked out really well. All right, so our question was about how do we ensure uh, food security? Um, of course, we sort of redefined that a little bit um, by saying, that it's not just food security, but it's availability of a balanced and, and nutritious diet. So there was a lot of nutrition uh, discussion here. And just to break it into the main, main points, there's lots of things we could do, and I'll talk about technology and various things. But the one we spent most of the time on, I think, um, was managing the demand side of this equation. So it's not the production. I think that, that came up a lot in the last couple of days. Um, and that's going to require policy development. Um, and one of the policies that, that we talked about, including, um, is that, you know, the externalities of agriculture have to be included in the, in the prices of food. So try to, try to make government accountable. Um, but then it comes down to how you do that. So do you redistribute the cost um, into other things, or do you just increase the price of food across the board? Do you match the price to the actual footprint of the food? So there was some discussion about possible ways of doing that. And then... The thing that came up in, in the policy side, if we want people to make better choices and move the demand, we need early education, childhood education. We need to get this into the, into the schools early on. Um, maybe and we do that now to some degree, but we could probably do it better, including a little more of the externalities in the discussion. <clears throat> um, and then another piece that came up for managing demand was using technology. Right, so we have a lot of technology, and um, one concept that we talked a little bit about um, was using modern advertising. So we all know that we can be swayed with modern advertising. Maybe we ought to engage modern advertising techniques to sway uh, consumer choices towards better, better decisions. Um, just in general, having a cultural change about how we interact with our foods um, and to engage the people that actually prepare the foods. So you, one of the graphs we saw was that in the U.S. at least, I think it was the U.S., half, the, half of our meals come outside of our homes. So someone's preparing a lot of our food. So if we get people like that on board, chefs and the such, um, then that would be helpful. I can, can I move this? Oh, good. <clears throat> okay. Then we talked about technology development uh, and adopting uh, technologies. And, and really this came up, data was an important piece of this. And in, the, in that National Academy's report about scientific breakthroughs for 2030, what's that? Oh. It didn't switch. It switched on my screen, but it didn't seem to switch there. Ah, here we go. Thanks. Um, in, in the uh, uh, agricultural science breakthroughs for agriculture, there's a whole chapter dedicated to data and, and the use of data, and, and it's shown up in other reports as well. Um, but a couple ideas came up, increasing data collection, um, but it's not just about data collection. It's about improving the communications infrastructure. So rural areas don't have a great infrastructure to transfer data around, so we need to keep both of those things in mind. Um, work on making it easier to collect large amounts of data. It has to have high spatial and temporal resolutions, um, and also including economic data, trying to put it all together so that we can understand the system better. Using machine learning and deep learning algorithms to reveal some of the hidden associations throughout the system. I mean, some things are going to be obvious to us or fairly obvious, but you'll, when you get data, disparate data sets together and you apply deep learning algorithms to them, you often will get surprises about relationships that you didn't think about. Um, ultimately, we want to do all of this to, to provide decision support tools uh, to, to the farmers, right? to the people that are producing the foods and to consumers, the people that are, are buying it and eating it. Um, so an ex just one example is fertilizer needs, right? We, we talked about how do you do that right now? Well, the person who tells you how much fertilizer to use is the person selling you the fertilizer. So there's a little bit of conflict there if we want sustainability in, in the equation. Um, and then we have to do, whatever we do for technology point of view, we have to ensure that those data collection methods are indeed sustainable, right? Do the benefits of that data, those data collection methods, whether it's drones and all kinds of other things, do they outweigh the costs of, of deploying them? So that's kind of a way of saying keep this whole system in mind. Um, 
So then we talked about some other technologies, um, uh, genetics and breeding. And I think some people are probably going to discuss this as well. These came up, but we spent less time on them. Uh, controlled environment agriculture as a tool. It's not going to, you know, we're not going to grow wheat in boxes, but it's going to be uh, a tool that we can use moving forward. Um, we talked about insects, but not so much as people eating them, but more about animal feed um, and enhancing productivity on, on fallow or marginal lands. It's something we're going to have to do moving forward. And this, we came up with carbon um, and some discussion about bringing manure back into our system a little bit better, uh, you know, using it with cover crops. Um, and then one of the things in the UK, at least, was manure is produced in one place and it needs to be used in another place. So it's a distribution problem. It's a, it's a poop distribution problem. <laughs> and then just sort of last things in general, we need to improve our distribution systems for food. It's not just production. I think we heard that 10% of the value is, is the, the production side. The whole rest of that system is in distributing food in the U.S., we overproduce, and it really comes down to how do we get it to the people. So supply chains, economics, minimizing waste in that. And then the last thing that we, we spent a little time discussing was to, to move towards creating a research ecosystem that, in, con, convert, uh, that encourages convergent research. So we need multiple disciplines and multiple concepts to come together to solve these challenging systems level problems. Um, and I, the agro food health ecosystem challenges. I mean, one of the things that we don't do in the U.S. well, and Sally brought up this point, is we don't really talk about agriculture, food, and health at the same time in the same places with the same groups. And we need to start doing that. I think this is the one health concept. Um, a colleague in Australia brought this up, and I, I think it's sort of global. But this idea of considering the whole system as a, and the one health concept, I think, encompasses that. So that's what we came up with for food security. Uh, that was excellent. I just wanted to have a couple of comments. You put the slide back. Oh, hi. Someone, last, else, someone else has to do that. <clears throat> the last one first. Can you put up slide three again? I want to say something. I agree with one health concept. It's excellent. It came from Sir Albert Howard. And the original concept was the health of soil, plants, animal, people is one and indivisible. That's the language which would be a complete sentence. Okay. The, right now, it is agriculture, food, and health. But the original concept is the health of soil, plants, animal, people, and environment is one and indivisible. That's one health concept. The other part was this slide just before. Okay. Uh, enhanced soil carbon. I suppose that's true. Through conservation, agriculture, and integrating crops with trees and livestock. We left the tree component out. Tree is tree, agroforestry tree. is an important component. Sure. And when you integrate animals, trees are integral to it. So that's the way I would suggest you modify it. You have two bullets on manure. I think it could be cover crop and integrated nutrient management, and then go to another bullet, which is manure. Now you've got two of them. Right. Sounds good. We can make that change. Thank you. Uh, right. Jonathan, are you ready? Does anyone in the group have David? Do you no? Okay. Yeah, My, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Fallow and marginal. Sorry. Instead of just fallow and marginal lands, it was degraded soils. So many arable soils are degraded, uh, and it was how do we get organic carbon into those arable soils, and not just thinking about marginal areas, actually, which could be reforested as part of uh, of carbon. We don't have to produce from all those lands. Okay. So degraded. Yeah. Lands. Degraded arable land. Got it. Thanks.